Hello everyone. In this video we want to apply the recursive least squares estimator to a very simple electric circuit which is basically just in resistor air which is powered by a current source and where we can measure the equivalent voltage over the resistor by this voltage sensor. The idea or the motivation of this video is that if we send up a certain amount of current through this resistor, we will basically have some power losses, which are R times I square, right? So normally you know that from uh, high school already. However, the resistance of the resistor is typically not a constant value if we look into the technical details of this very simple circuit, but for example, the resistance itself can be dependent on the temperature which we denote here as theta. And in the most simplest model variant in order to represent this temperature impact on the resistance we can basically consider here a linear relationship. So that means that we have some baseline resistance R0 at some baseline temperature theta0 that could be for example room temperature and that if the actual temperature theta of that resistor is deviating from theta zero, there will be a linear increase or decrease of the resistance value with respect to the scaling parameter alpha, which is also called a temperature coefficient. Okay, if we look at this first step of a model of this temperature influence on this resistance, we can basically see, okay, we have an electrical kind of submodel, but we will also need some thermal submodel in order to describe the impact of these power losses on the temperature change over time. And in order to do that, we will consider a very simple one-dimensional lumped parameter model where we say, okay, we have this resistor, and this resistor is characterized by the temperature theta t, right? So this is this temperature, theta t. And we also have some ambient temperature at the outside, which is theta a for ambient. And for the sake of simplicity, we just consider that this is a constant ambient temperature, like room temperature or something. And then of course we have, if we make some kind of a power balance around this simple thermal model, we first can consider, okay, for power heat losses, we can consider this R times I square. So this is the power losses which basically go into this lumped mass of the uh, capacitor, which we can represent by the thermal conductor, by the thermal capacitance C th. So the subscript th is here for the thermal model. And so this is r times i square. And then we have of course some temperature, some heat exchange between the ambient temperature, the ambient room, and the resistor itself. And this heat exchange between resistor and ambient temperature can be just considered very simply as theta minus theta A divided by RTH, and RTH would be here something like a lumped thermal resistance basically denoting how easy the uh, excessive heat of the resistor can be uh, transferred, can be provided to the ambient. If you formalize this idea of this very simple lumped thermal model, we can write this as a first order differential equation, which is d theta of t dt as the left hand side is identical to 1 over CTH, the thermal capacitance, times our power equation or power balance, which is theta of t minus theta ambient of t divided by, by RTH, so basically the temperature exchange between resistor and ambient, plus 
our power losses p of t. Right, so this thermal model here is quite simple. It basically tells us if more heat from the resistor is transferred into the ambient, then we introduce power losses, then the temperature will go up, or vice versa, if more heat is provided to the ambient, then extra losses are produced internally inside the resistor, the temperature will go down. Right, so a very simple model. However, the idea of this model is now to basically do some tracking of this resistance value R of t. Why is that of interest? If we look at our little circuit here, we basically have knowledge of the voltage, right? We measure the voltage across the resistor. We know the load current, so this current I, which is driven through the resistor, but we do not know the resistance itself. And therefore, it can be interesting to track the resistance for uh, monitoring purpose, for example, then also to utilize this linear equation to monitor for the temperature in that sense if the resistance value accesses beyond a certain value that this can be an indicator for overturn temperature and therefore for a potential uh, overheating. Okay, what's the interesting part by that? The interesting part so far is that this model which I've sketched here is basically a nonlinear ODE, right? So here we have the ODE, a first order derivative on the left hand side. Uh, and then this nonlinear ODE is depending on P of t, which is depending on this equation, and R of t is depending on this equation, which is again depending on theta. So this is, if you insert everything together, basically a nonlinear ODE, where we would not directly consider the recursively squares estimator as an uh, interesting approach. However, if we just focus only on this equation so far, so if we say, okay, we know that the resistor can be also, or the resistance can be also rewritten as the voltage V is equivalent to R times I, then we also have a linear alternative equation to describe the resistance R, which we can utilize in a recursively squares sense. And how we can do that is basically we write down our least squares problem as V of k, so the measurement of the voltage at the k time instant, is identical to R of k, our parameter, times I of k, our regressor, right? So this would be in our least squares nomenclature y is equal to w times z. Right, so very nice here in that sense. So that means that with the recursive leaf squares estimator, we can basically track that. Especially if we consider that this change of the parameter W, so in this sense the resistance over time here, only changes quite slowly in terms of the update rates of the load current and the um, voltage measurement in contrast to the temperature dynamics, right? So basically what we sketch here is an alternative way to get uh, the resistance over time with recursively squares while not needing to actually solve this nonlinear ODE. Let's have a view into our Julia code. So what we can see here in our example notebook is basically the same modeling approach as we have discussed here, just for your convenience. And then what we basically do here is we set up this nonlinear ODE, right? So this part basically of the uh, ODE. And then we assume, okay, we need some information on the input. And this input here in our sense would be the load current, 
And simply what we assume here that the load current is a sinusoidal function with an amplitude of 10 amperes. With that, we have basically fully considered our ODE. We can put that with some starting conditions like ambient temperature, which is considered here 20 degrees, which is also the starting temperature, into the standard ODE solver of Julia. And then what we get from that is the temperature trajectory over time. So what we can see here that this temperature of the resistor is starting at room temperature, 20 degrees Celsius, and then we get this harmonic oscillation which is due to the uh, sinusoidal current which we basically drive here through our resistor and in steady state we basically have a harmonic oscillation roughly around 100 degrees Celsius, right? So that would be the temperature of this resistor. Okay, then alternatively what we can now do is we take our least squares approach. So we see here our linear equation or alternative equation. So that means we will basically observe the voltage here using voltage measurements. That can be seen here in this diagram. So we see also that the voltage has the sinusoidal shape, which is somehow intuitive because we say we propagate a sinusoidal current and with a certain resistance value that basically results in a sinusoidal voltage. However, we see that there is a very mild um, noise on the measurement because as usual we assume in the least square sense that our measurement value, so here the voltage, is noisy. And then with this information, we can basically start to set up our recursive least squares estimator, right? So we have here a loop through all our time values, which we will consider. And then in every step of this time loop, we basically perform the three steps of the recursive least squares estimator, which is the updating of the correction factor, the updating of the parameter uh, vector, which in our case is just the resistance here, and then the update of the uh, p-matrix. Right, so just the three steps as usual. We let that run through a couple of time steps and then we basically plot the result, uh, which can be seen here. And the result is actually what we expect, right? So in red, we have here the true resistance value. So basically the resistance value as a solution of this uh, nonlinear ODE. And then uh, in blue, we have the estimated resistance, which is the outcome out of this recursive least squares estimator. And we can see here that qualitatively, the estimated resistance is quite close to the actual resistance without the need to actually know this model, right? At least not the entire model. So if you know just this linear model, it would have been enough to track this resistance with a recursive least squares estimator in a data-driven fashion why we would not need to have any knowledge about the underlying physics, which are modeled here by uh, this first order nonlinear differential equation. And this is a very practical and um, also everyday example how we can apply the recursive least squares estimator into practical engineering problems, especially when we want to track parameters which, um, which basically uh, decay or which changed slowly over time in that sense that the underlying dynamics are quite slow compared to the measurement time frames which we can have. Because here in this example which we have seen, we have seen that the temperature dynamics are much slower than the measurement update cycles here of our example. Thanks for watching and then see you in the next video.